Okay, folks. And with that, we're back. Once again, we've got London Conspiracy versus Cookies. I'm Llama Down Under. This Not time, we're joined by Mod Pax, who I believe is enforcing WCA rules. Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was just enjoying <laughs> that last game there. That's, you know... <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> and, sometimes uh, that just happens, you know? Like, in the games, it gets really tense, and uh, I gotta say, the most impressive thing to me that game was the fact of how close the net worth stayed, yeah, despite yeah. what seemed like a massive map advantage over to the side of London Conspiracy. But in the end... They close it out, that's all that matters. And uh, It was actually really well played by Cookies. Like, yeah. as much as we're making fun of them for the lack of kills, actually a fantastic, well played game by them, because as we saw, one mistake and you're out. That's how that game was, so... Either way, new game, new picks, Earth Spirit, people are gonna die! Yeah, gonna be, uh, it's kinda similar to the Chen earlier on in the game before, lots of aggression coming out early. Uh, hopefully it'll stay that way maybe a little bit longer this time into the game, but uh, LC now, they're going for that Venge, and I gotta say, with the OD still in the pool, oh. yeah, they're gonna pick that up. It's their hero. Like, they Radiant love this thing, skin. they will take it every single time. Um, I wouldn't mind Cookies actually grabbing maybe a different hero. Hezu this early? They, they seem to always throw him at the end of the draft. Like, if they mm -hmm. can't get the Lone Druid first, they just don't care. They'll just try and grab either the Dax here, the Nature's Prophet, or the Legion Commander in that second phase, and now an Enchantress. That was a new one for me. I cast so many of their games, and I think that was the first time that I've seen Ezu play it. I think it's, it actually was the first time they even picked Jan. Yeah, it, it's not something they've run as much for him, but it's... I mean, it had some trouble. I actually think it did well in lane. He just was out of position a few times a bit later and got those two early deaths. Now, how do you feel about Gyrocopter first round ban? Obviously had a lot of impact there, but over something like, for example, the Venge, the OD, the Earth Spirit. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's something that they've gone towards quite a few times for London Conspiracy, so I kind of understand it, but it might just be a sense of, like, trying to get yourself, like, you take a quote-unquote tier 2 hero in Gyrocopter, like, someone who usually shows up in the second phase of bans, and if you ban it out in the, the first phase, it can kind of open up a couple more tier 1 options coming back around to that fourth pick, so if you think you know what LC you're going to take in the 2-3, because you're going to open up with Earth Spirit, this will allow you to at least go back for either the Invoker or the Death Prophet. I'm a little surprised that they didn't grab the Invoker. I guess they're just a little bit concerned about too much pressure coming in the mid lane, maybe because the Earth Spirit's going to be more aggressive than defensive. He'll be roaming around and doing too much to help out the Invoker in the mid, so just pick someone a little safer in the Death Prophet. Yeah, I... I also wonder if perhaps they're worried that they need a lineup that can get objectives a little bit easier after that last game where it felt like while they were actually ahead for quite a bit of it cookies in the form wars they just didn't have the correct team fight engagement and so maybe they're deciding i don't know i think sometimes that can shake you up saying oh crap if we go head to head with them again it might go poorly oh yeah no there's definitely a uh like a factor that comes into play of like oh like last game like maybe you got a really top tier hero and let's say like he's killing his invoker i'm not even gonna single that but let's say he felt like he didn't do too well that game it could really shake you up, and you'd be like, I, I don't know, guys, like, just put me on, give me Death Prophet, you know, just let me press E, press R, <laughs> like, you guys are carrying me this game, that was way too hard, you know. Um, I, I can understand that kind of a mentality coming in, but coming around to the second picks, they do have quite a few options still left, uh, still lacking a little bit of that control that you do like for the Death Prophet, and excellent bands by London Conspiracy, of course, with Faces Void, and Darkseer, have two great heroes to synergize with her. Um, I, yeah. I wouldn't mind the old Legion here. But uh, the mm -hmm. prophet's very, very handy. Yeah, they're, it looks like they've decided to go all in on a push strat. Nature's Prophet also is something that Keizu plays a lot, so I'm not surprised they try to get it early for him. What I find to be interesting is the Oracle ban out. Cookies, a lot of teams try to run the Death Prophet and Oracle together. It actually has a really low win rate, I know, but I think a lot of that is more experienced teams let less experienced teams get it when they're playing them because they don't care. Um... <laughs> Because they know they're going to win anyway. So the win rate on those two together is, like, atrocious. But it's obviously a setup with Synergy. And I know they didn't have the first pick out of this phase, but they could have maybe gone for it over something else. Or do you think it's better to ban the Oracle versus someone like the Jug? Like another solid carry, maybe Spectre or someone? Who's going to rip open your early push strat? Uh, it's... I don't know. It seems like some teams are just willing to ban the Oracle first off. Like, they don't... Maybe you're really prioritizing, let's say, the Faceless Void. It's one of the nicer counters against it. I think it's just a support that does so much that <laughs> it kind of feels like uh, I can't, like, get anything done with this hero round. Uh, it's pretty good for trying to save people up against the Earth Spirit, obviously, with his early rotation. So, I, I, I like getting rid of it, just to be sure. 
Um, in terms of their own... Oh, that's a pretty nice defensive support to pick up Raiders. instead, though. The Winter Wyvern. I, I like this with OD because it can help set up into Sandy's Eclipse. You know, the hero, yeah, it got gutted. <laughs> Winter's Curse got totally obliterated, but it's okay. The other three spells are what actually made the hero anyway, let's be honest. Uh, one level, the 1-1-1, one, one, one. any hero that goes 1-1-1 one, one, one generally has a really great spell set, and that's what you'll typically see on Winter Wyvern, unless you've got a really specified role coming out in that really early laning space, so... I think pretty good here from LC. Yeah, and the big thing, obviously, being it detours cookies from maybe they could have still here gone for an enchanter support. It makes their lanes weird, but they could have gone for it to just really hone in on that push strat. They could have tried to pick up somebody else who might go for a necro on monocon or something. And now you're a little bit worried, right? Because that winter's curse does work now. The new one works a lot better the more units are around. That's yeah, true. I'm Try here now when uh if you are looking towards oh you were cutting out a little bit mont packs i don't know if let me i haven't been on team so can... <laughs> no worries i try to use it over skype just because sometimes skype uh robots people but obviously we can have the same voice activation okay, they all have their issues uh, yeah. let's see here. clearly uh what i think we're people are on the discord boat right now once once they get more servers then i'll be i'll be all aboard that boat excellent Anyway, I think it was just your voice activation not picking up. You were saying. Okay. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, by the way, like, they're looking for the safe plan. That's why they're taking so long here, because currently you're going to be having the Juggernaut. Um, probably not going to be aggro, judging from what they have. They, I mean, you always could, but should be okay. So you can kind of go for something a little bit more risky, and it will be the Spectre. I need to talk back. faster. But anyway, uh, the Global Strat with the Nature's Prophet, that is the way to go. Uh, very solid combination. It does change things up a little bit. I really like this, actually. We've seen a lot of teams try to do the early pushing strats, and then if that fails, you're you're done. Like, if you don't push down a Rax by 30 minutes or so, sometimes even earlier, depending on the exact lineup and when it peaks, you're shit out of luck, and having a Spectre as backup, that's nice. Reserve time. Yeah, and we've seen a ton of success coming from this hero, both, you know, obviously in the pubs, everyone's all about it, but it's really great right now, going in towards that urn build. You can even grab some drums. You don't really need to just try and do this whole rush of the Radiance thing, and when you already have the Nature's Prophet and the Earth Spirit, who are going to be a great synergy, just showing up to any lane and doing their thing. Uh, Spectre with the Haunt adds that other element. Uh, and they, like, the other good thing about their draft is that there's not really anything that counters this, you know? There's <laughs> not all that much you can do against it, and they only have their fifth roll support left, so they can just pick up, like, a Witch Doctor if they want. They could go back towards like a dazzle or something, or the AA if you want full global, yeah. which Elsie are a little bit worried about. Jeez, that's that's a little intense for me, but okay. I, I like a dazzle here just because of the nature's profit, but agreed. Like. I think AA is a bit all in, and also a not the strongest of laners without a lane partner. Like with Earth Spirit roaming, he might be able to set up those cold feet, but otherwise, it's not the easiest to make stuff happen. Dire team pick. Yeah, and that Kefka Earthshaker being banded again, man. He has been playing that thing so much lately. He buys mm -hmm. this like Blink Yules build every time that I watch him play, at least. And the way that he sets up for his team is it's really incredible. He really does make the hero look extremely good again, and I'm continuously impressed by it. So not going to get to see it this time, unfortunately. I'm not sure. Um, lately, typically it's like Beavis' hero that ends up being last. Like that Skywrath Mage that got banned out last time. Um, Ten seconds remaining. Master's gone. There's really not that many top-tier offlaners left. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, that, that happened last game as well, where all the offlaners got picked out. Of they course, Enchantress is left. They might uh, try to go for Tides? it. Yeah, the Enchantress will be fine to try and apply some pressure to the Ooh. Spectre, but the Tide, yeah. Um, it's Rage. really good up against the Global Strat, because you can typically pretty good with the Blink Dagger, and when a bunch of people just suddenly show up at once, you just hop right in there and pop that Ravage. So, uh, no surprise there. Has some downsides too, right, though? Playing around such a long cooldown, if Split Push does end up coming out, London Conspiracy might, you know, if they use the Ravage elsewhere, and then the Nature's Prophet is like, well, that's cue for me to go push top, I'm fine. Ten seconds and uh, the other thing is, like, about Tidehunter, how could you even consider zoning this guy out right now? Maybe the Dazzle, when he comes in for the Anchor remain. Smash, might work, but honestly, there's really not that much you can do with the Tide. He's going to start trading, um, so they'll go with the Disruptor. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty solid. He'll be fine. Just throwing those cues up on him. Now, they don't have an easy setup for Disruptor spells, so this is going to be a big old skill match. I, you know, sometimes we see the Disruptor paired with the Doxy here. He's got nothing, and as you mentioned, Tidehunter, a Spectre plus a Disruptor, not exactly getting kills on him easily, unless mistakes are made, I think. 
Oh, with that, we're in. I'll make sure I put Mark Pax's name up on here, because now we've got a co-caster. Oh, Flag. this. Uh, even if this one is like an hour no kills, we'll be fine because we have someone to join us. It's... Yeah, I actually left at one point during the game and I came back. It was like 20 minutes. I like, went upstairs <laughs> and I came back and there was quite literally only been one kill. I couldn't yeah. believe it. I thought I was like, had it paused or something. I was actually worried that you would have thought the game was just going to continue and you'd gone to do something. <laughs> I wouldn't make it for game two. <laughs> yeah, I, I got I got pretty worried there. Either way, folks, we're into it. We're going to see some early rotations now. For Okay, Tidehunter just starting with eight tangos and a ring of protection. Obviously, it isn't the easiest for the Disruptor. Do you end up putting... I mean, obviously, having lots in Glimpse, like, Max in Glimpse is usually the way people go, but do you try to zone the Disruptor, or the Tide here with the Thunderstrike? I'm, I'm just... Honestly, I'm not a really big fan of, like, the two points of Thunderstrike that some people have been up to. Um, I think it's just those points in Glimpse are so crucial. Maybe it depends on the total aggression that you're going to be getting, so it, we might see it, but honestly, he's just going to end up getting an Iron Talon going to the camp anyway, so... I would just stick with the one point in the queue, try and hold him off from killing your Spectre at the very least, and just get ready for your glimpse. And the Wyvern and the Venge are both heroes that are very easily able to roam and stack, so Tide is that to fall back on. We're gonna see an only rune engagement, there is the Spirit Siphon coming out. Kafka hasn't skilled yet, so the Anchor Smash, I imagine he'll skill it here. No, he still hasn't, he's just standing on the rune. They're doing a lot of damage to Babylon Knight, but now Pablo in the danger zone up there. They do manage to get both runes on the Radiant- Oh, he doesn't oh die God, to Roche. Yeah. You gotta be a little frustrated there, and also we are seeing Steph style go down to Jalopy. That that doesn't make the bounty so worth it. <laughs> Nothing. All right, solid start here once again from LC, and uh, so this is. Um, I'm obviously just kind of hopping in here, but this is the best of three, obviously. And is this uh, like elimination? Are you done? Yeah, you single out? elim. There's okay, just that's what I thought. One old bracket. Now, for a lot of these teams, I think. Well, for a lot of people coming in, London Conspiracy, the much bigger, well-known team. So either way, for Cookies, I think they're doing very well. Like, Lost Game, okay, what is... We have nobody in bottom lane. For the Radiant. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of... This is, this is an issue. So they... It's not the most aggro lane. Like, Juggernaut can, but we've seen a lot of safe lane Juggernauts just doing their thing lately, but... Uh... Having the, the thought process to be like, all right, we need to go top. Like, they can't fight this lane. That is one thing about Disruptor. Um, he, he can't really fight in a tri lane. He's great against a solo, but you're, it looks like we're going to be getting a little bit of musical lanes here because LC know that they can put the pressure here on top of the Spectre. And if you shut down Spectre, what else do they really have? It's even worse than that, right? If you shut down the Spectre, they have a push lineup that I guess they have to rely on Tower Gold for the Spectre, but even then, it's not going to be enough to get up something like the Radiance. It's going to be like, hey, maybe you get an early on. Kefka, he doesn't pick up a TP here. I wasn't sure if he was going to rotate as well. Here it comes, though. Pablo is here. They're pinging out the Wyvern. That's the hero they want. Anchor Smash has already come out. Biver taking a bit of damage, but they don't have it, as we've seen. And oh no, Flens doesn't have the mana for the dagger. It's going to just have to walk away, taking a lot of damage. They roll on in to stop Kefka from killing off their Spectre, but everybody's so low. Sal going to come out on the Spectre. Now it's Pablo in the danger zone. He does have a roll in eight seconds, but there's an Anchor Smash with his name on it. Eats the Fairy Fire. Still taking damage. Oh, the auto attacks, the gush, and ends up getting the kill. Spectre comes on through, but not nearly enough to kill off a Tide. I'm not sure if... Well, first of all, the fact that Beaver was level 2, I was just like... I was shocked for a moment there. I was like, oh, I don't know if they were expecting that Arctic Burn to come out there, because judging by their positioning, they weren't, so they were punished very heavily there. Surprised Elsie were only able to get one kill. They did manage to tactically retreat. As with this haste room, just gonna try and burn down Baby Ned yeah. here, make mid a little bit easier. It was a bit weird. <laughs> um, but... Eskil, okay, in good news, London Conspiracy is losing one lane, which is the mid. A big Death Prophet can do something, but as Baby Knight gets levels, the equilibrium here does shift. Yeah, it's true. Like, you, And you have to be pretty careful just from Baby Knight, like, roaming up on you, though. You get a couple of those arcane orbs, he's now going to start stacking those up. Probably just start maxing it completely at this point. And he doesn't really have that great rotate in. It's going to have to be Viva, but he's obviously going to be pretty busy just trying to shut down Flens, so... This should be pretty good for Isco. Yeah, I don't want to say... No, no. Obviously, losing two lanes isn't great. Um, but it... it, it <laughs> I, I mean, it just feels like LC really got the jump on them when it comes to both laning and the draft. LC doing a better job there. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure right now uh, on Pablo. Because when you go for this Earth Spear pick, obviously, you want to be getting a lot of these picks. You need to be putting the pressure on, so... Baby Knight, look how cautiously he's playing this, because he's low on HP. Yeah, he's got Fairy Fires, but he's going to wait for his bottle. 
Uh, and he knows Pablo's not showing anywhere, and he's definitely the prime target. Yeah, we've seen this out of the really good players. That, I mean, we've talked to some professional players who are like, oh, that's spirit, he's broken, there's not a good way to handle him. And this is kind of how you do it. You try to keep quick, creep equilibrium in your favor, and you just don't overextend ever. You don't even, like, you don't even go where you normally would as a mid. You just stay far back, play it safe. And they might even be suspecting that there might be a ward up there, kind of where they have theirs. I'm not sure. They might have had it down in time that they know there's no ward there, but judging by, like, the way that BabyNet was moving, if I was Pablo, I might be pinging that out and being like, okay, they must have a ward here because, you know, the, <laughs> the way he's playing so cautiously, but he, in fact, does not. Just a good play by Baby Knight. Still keeping themselves up this 3-0 lead, and, again, there's just no contest here up against this Juggernaut. So this will be two games in a row of free farm Juggernaut, but... Not no. on the, uh, the the good the winning team this time, I suppose. Now, we did see last time that, okay, we have a roll in. They're trying to go on to Biver again. They've keep it in the Nature's Prophet as well. Spectre getting very low, but they will get the kill. So finally, they found something in this lane. They're trying for it onto Kefka. Anchor Smash does not hit on Kezu, so he will still be there. The stun comes out onto Poplo, though, and they do manage to bring down the tide. The glimpse backwards, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but any sorts of kills, fantastic for Cookies. Yeah, perfect. Kezu gets the phase boots up. He's like, alright guys, let's go. <laughs> I'm showing up. I got the damage. So this is exactly what they need uh, to operate this draft effectively. And that's a huge swing. It's 900 gold in total. Yeah. This early on in the game. Massive difference. And uh, that'll help start bringing them up this net worth chart. It is still being led by the Juggernaut and the Tide Hunter. So once that 6 hits up for Kepka, of course, that's not going to be possible anymore. Nice job missing that uh, Splinter Blast. What do you... Is this all they can do? Because it really does feel like all they can do is try to go on the Wyvern right now with Pablo. The mid lane, not only is it normally very difficult, um, it's also an OD who can Astral Imprison and buy time for supports to rotate in. So do you think Pablo should just stick up here with Biver, Or is there somewhere else? Oh goodness, Flynn's in a lot of trouble. They're just coming in Anchor Smash with Spectre's name on it. She goes down. That's rough. They're like running solo off lane Spectre right now and being extremely punished. No surprise with it being a... Uh... A tide hunter in the lane, but um, you're asking like what they're gonna do here. E skill, he's gone for the really early point exorcism, which is interesting because most people would hold this. They just like if you're actually gonna end up needing it. So to me, that signals they must have some sort of plan. Like I don't know if they're immediately about to start five manning and start going into the tower, but it's pretty unusual to see someone just immediately pick up the exorcism and not um, like hold on to it either for later or hold on to it for uh, like kind of getting more Crypt Swarm, more Spirit Siphons, because I feel like the slow from Siphon is going to give you more killing potential in this game. Flens on bottom. Yeah, they're going in for the stun onto Flens. Oh, the Omni Slash comes out! And that's physical damage with that minus armor. Oof. I think she was dead either way. Yeah, it's just level 6. It's like the, the freest kill in the game. It's probably the only hero that gets the <laughs> easiest kill when he, they hit 6. Like, I, I don't think there's a hero that has it easier. It's out of nowhere. It's just like, oh, I'm dead. And, you know, you're an offlaner against Juggernaut. You see that little gold glow happening, you're just like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> there's just nothing you can do sometimes. Yeah, and there's really no place for this Spectre. Obviously, the Tide lane wasn't working out. The Splinter Blast was far too spammable. And now bottom lane, they're under-leveled compared to the London Conspiracy Tri lane. So I'm just... They're not super far behind yet, but I'm worried it's just going to continue a downward trend. Or cookies. Oh, Kefka. Oh, they, they weren't watching? Oh, they, they had the, uh, the Ravage on top. I was worried there. Coiling Blade was uh, just coming off cooldown, but he gets out. Kez is okay, and... Um, yeah, you're right, though. Like, it's it's kills. They, they need to get stuff rolling. I feel like they need a Kezu TP bot, but it's gonna be hard. jelly has got the spin, obviously, so great up against the Disruptor. It basically has to be Soul, and, and then you're gonna be rotating four heroes bottom to kill Eventual Spirit. Might just be what you need to do, unfortunately. As you mentioned up top, they didn't blow the Ravage for the solo kill. It doesn't look like either that Kefka is particularly interested in coming off the lane, just farming up that mech. And maybe... I'm not sure about that. A lot of teams do prefer to use that ult the minute it hits 6 and put it on cooldown, you know? Yeah, um... I guess they're just kind of trying for some sort of a play here. Try and hold on to it. Uh, they might be expecting the four man rotations you mentioned. Like, they might realize that Cookie's very desperate. We'll see them going in. There's going to be a TP in from the Nature's Prophet. There's also a TP in from.
the wyvern, but at the same time, they've lost one. Can they find Jalopy? Oh gosh, Death Style eating fairy fires. Bibber is here now, saving up Jalopy from that physical damage. Do they have it? It's not looking like it. In comes the OD as well, and suddenly Kezu's gonna be going down as well. Goodbye, the Death Prophet's come in. She doesn't have mana to do anything. No exorcism here, and she's using that Spirit Siphon, but it's not enough, and OD, a couple more smacks could get the kill on her. The uh, Oh, the oh, Hanity's Eclipse comes out. A kick on through, saving Eskil's life. But now, Kafka's here with the Ravage, and there's just nothing cookies can do. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what we talked about. You end up bringing, it ended up being five heroes to kill a Ventral Spirit. They get punished heavily for it. And the fact that we know it's coming, well, so do LC. Like, Kafka's just sitting up top, waiting, holding on uh, to that Ravage. He doesn't even have to use it by the time he gets here. But and now they still have this threat with them. They can even start pushing down towers themselves if they'd like. Just hold the Ravage. He's already building into the mechanism. There's no point going for the uh, Blink Dagger, honestly, this game. And Kazu, yeah, he'll be okay. But uh, yeah, Radiant's just group up, use the Thread of the Ravage, and they can start attack. gaining some easy objectives. Oh, well, they've caught out Solon, who's, I think, going on a warding mission. Maybe they'll get this kill. Here. Solon doing a lot of damage to Pablo May. Oh, Pablo is one hit away, sitting at 7 HP before the regening kicked in. Oof. That was, that was a little bit worrisome. I mean, Avengeral Spirit is like 2v1ing people right now, but it's okay. They got, they got the job done. I mean, they're falling so far behind, though. It's not the huge leads that we sometimes see in very one-sided games, but this is kind of the slow suffocation, right? 4k net worth behind at 10 minutes, 4,000 experience as well. Out of, you know, the tide is second on the net worth. That's terrifying. Yeah, being anywhere, like, they're not quite at that 500 GPM mark where you're just like, oh god, this game's, like, Radiant's over. That's, pr that's pretty much the one that it's extremely difficult. Uh, it's only going to be around the 400-ish uh, the here for now, so... I don't know. It, it's worrisome, but there, there's definitely still hope to bring it back. They have some options when it comes to Roshan, of course, with the Exorcism. Um, they're always going to have the Haunt, so Radiant's you at least Flens, when he sees an opening, he can be farming there without Radiant's worrying about leaving his team behind. Uh, he'll just come into the fights. Inspector does go for phase boots. Do you think this is an earned drums game, just because a little a little tank up, a little bit of hope of getting involved? I don't know. It's a tough call. Like usually, most games, um, if your farm is just going like somewhat normally, I would uh, typically be recommending the the urn into the drums. But at the same time, now you kind of feel like it is a decent radiance team, so <sighs> it's hard. I don't know if I'm gonna get space for radiance, though, honestly. Pablo trying to get the roll away. Will the omni slash come out? No, it won't. So. At least they got saved there, and they do lose the tower. And oh gosh, they have a Midas up on the OD now. It's not the earliest, but at the same time, Eskil in a lot of trouble. Astro Prism are going to set up for this magic missile. I think he might be dead. Yeah, just a lot. We'll see, though. There's a lot of support coming in the Omni Slash. It's shared the best bounces that they could have hoped for on Cookies. If they get this kill on Jalopy, that was huge. And now they might be able to turn into a little bit of a push. Eskil very low. He may just die to Splinter Blast. Somebody give this man some regen. It's not looking like it. And they have to back out on Cookies because a Splinter Blast would actually kill half of their lineup right now. Yeah, I miss I misread that. I thought one of those TPs was Kefka, but without the Tide Hunter being there, that was like the perfect scenario for Cookies. So, congratulations to them. Just a single pickoff results in a, another big swing. They get themselves that uh, the uh, objective that you can grab with your Exorcism. So, pretty much the uh, perfect scenario for them. <laughs> and uh, a couple more of those, and we'll be right back to even footing. Honestly, they must have bribed the jug Juggernaut or RNG for those Omni Slash yeah. bounces. That was actually the worst because he also ended up. I mean, he started Omni Slashing here, and he ends up almost under the tower with his Omni Slashes. That, that's just... I'm pretty sure you're upset here if you're <laughs> Jalopy. Yeah, it made it look like it was, uh, like, level 11 or something there. But no, only gonna be the, uh, <laughs> three jumps and made his way that far. That's impressive. Yeah. Well, don't need to blink this game either way. We're going to be seeing things go back to farming. Um, Spectre, I think, got a little bit in on that. She is going to go for the urn here. It's a rough ride for her. I, They still haven't pushed too many towers along the Conspiracy, but obviously they have the power, even just the threat of Tidehunter's Ravage to use in pushing. Yeah, that, honestly, that's pretty much the whole game plan right now for LC. It's just, the mechanism is up, like, let's march. What, what are they possibly going to do here? Yeah, you've got the global pickoff, and we just saw everyone rotating in mid. Uh, I think Jelpy should just be able to live here. Maybe the DD will be enough. Yeah, he's gonna... No, he doesn't go for the spin. They pick him off another big kill. 
Yeah, no, got the silence off in time. Nicely played by E-Skill. A uh, little bit unusual to have the silence that early, but appropriate skilling there. So only three points in the siphon, but that spin or the uh, silence is what guarantees it. So there's the potential they might be able to get a trade on the tower here. I'll be interested to see if LC want to try and fight this with the uh, the Ravage. So Glyph has already been used for the Radiant, and Dia has theirs up, of course. I'm actually, we were pulling some stats the other day on the Death Prophet skill build, and it's like, obviously there's heaps of variants, right? Because it's all situational. Oh, yeah. So I really love seeing that Eskil did go for the Silence, because a lot of people hold off on it, like you said. Um, and actually, Biver, in a little bit of trouble, should just be able to Arctic Burn away. Actually drops the Winter's Curse. Will this set up for the return kill? Kefka, of course, does have the Rabbit. I don't think he wants to use it for one. And Pablo, anchor smashed to death. Oh, yeah. I love seeing people die to that. Yeah, the anchor smash. It is a very satisfying one. It's like the Darkseer Judo Chop, you know? Yeah. It's just like that really slow punch. That's gotta be my favorite one, personally. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. And, uh... So they... They are going to get the urn up on the Spectre, obviously. Really don't want to be skipping out on that item. And th this is where the big decisions start to come to play. If, let's say, they lose the next two fights, probably going to have to start building new drums. If they get some amazing, like, fights that somehow just kind of happen, like that one in the mid lane, and you can start building up towards a bigger item on Flens, then then maybe you can see the Radiance or possibly, like, Diffusal Blade or something along those lines. Probably going to be Radiance this game, honestly. But... Oh, the swap out onto Eskil gets the Yules off in time. There's also a really nice Static Storm. There's going to be no Ravage yet. He tries to get onto the sidelines, but there's the Silence. Kefka finally gets the Ravage off. Does go down. Baby Knight doing a lot of work here. Eskil is still alive, though, bottling up on the Spirit Siphon. Oh, they're getting themselves some Baby Knight. Really well played again from Cookies. They, ha they have all these tools on the side of LC, but they can't quite find that synchronization, you know? Like, they were missing out on the Winter's Curse that time, thanks to the engagement with the Earth Spirit in the mid lane, so they didn't have that as a little bit of a defensive tool. A really nice stack storm thrown up by Steph Style, as well as the follow-up Kinetic Field. Like, it wasn't exactly that perfect thing that, just like you mentioned during the draft, they don't have anything to set it up perfectly, but it did the job, you know what I mean? Like, they yeah. got it done where the Ravage wasn't top tier, and essentially, it's what saved the, site, the uh, entire fight for Cookies. I... 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 This is a joke theory, what I'm about to say, but it's like cookies have done the let's give them big bounties so that when we take a few team fights because they overextend, we get extra gold. I obviously not at all what happened. I don't think anybody wants their laning phase to go the way theirs did, but they are just somehow coming back into this one. Little overextensions by London Conspiracy, completely punished by cookies, it feels like. I'm sure that, like, if 6.83 had gone on, like, any longer, that would have just, like, started being a thing, you know? People would have eventually theorycrafted it so hard that we would have been seeing just, like, people feeding down the mid lane. And, you know, some players, they're, they're still stuck in that phase, you know? You watch some, like, pilot die games and everything like that, but, you know, it's... <laughs> I'm just... Okay, pilot die. We love you. It's fine. Yeah. And... I mean, it's just really interesting to see. I, I thought after the first game, I was really surprised. I was like, wow, Cookie's... They're making this a short one for us, but they're managing to get back in this, and as you said, if this keeps happening, Spectre can go Radiance. It's going to be tough. It's It certainly is possible. I'm hoping that's what, uh, you know, well, I mean, I should say cookies are hoping that's what's going to happen. Uh, it, it would definitely make the game a little bit more interesting because currently, uh, although you can't tell because the game's paused, it does look like we're about back to even here. <laughs> and when's the next Exorcism? That's pretty much the biggest thing right now. So it was just, just used. used. Yeah. yeah. So, let's see. Roshan. Uh, they could take it. Level 2 healing ward. Up on Jellipy. And, eh, they got, yeah, they got Max Wave Terror. So they can easily take Roshan here on the side of LC. What they need to do is snag that up before the next Exorcism comes off cooldown. And that'll, like, completely stop this momentum dead in its tracks for Cookies. Now, do you think, though, for Cookies, obviously the Ravage is on cooldown. That's a huge, long cooldown. They don't have the Exorcism, but do you try to make a play in between? Both the Sanity's Eclipse being on cooldown and the Ravage? I think uh, it depends. If you're really feeling that momentum that you just go to that fight and you're kind of feeling, you know, you're like, oh, we got this. Like, we're back in it. I, I can feel that we have this advantage again. They might try it, but at the same time, they're also very, you know, ult dependent. If they don't have the Haunt up, if they don't have the Exorcism up. And Flens just, uh, that's oh. a coming out of the pause death. Oh, that's the worst. I'm, I'm giving that. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt on that one. <laughs> I was not looking up there because, as you said, coming out of the pause, you're not really expecting a whole bunch of action there. And yeah, oh, again, we see another nice Omni Slash from the Juggernaut, this time level 2. Getting that's your easy kills. Yeah, and then easy Roshan, thanks to that pickoff. And I think Spectre... Okay, she's picking up the drums. I think she bought out before she died. Because, yeah, she, she lost a lot of gold there. 
Oh, great. But as you said, Roshan is up on LC. Four cookies, you just try to dodge fights for the next five minutes. Yeah, and then the problem with that, of course, is that they've, they've itemized really well in LC for this exact scenario, because Kefka's going to have the Ravage up in 40 seconds, he's already got the mechanism, and they can just start marching right into the Tier 1. And they should feel relatively confident in it, as long as they, you know, they have some some good timers on the ultimate, they have a good understanding of when the Exorcist is coming back up. They can start to make those decisions of when they want to trade for objectives, but it looks like they got a nice little Ancient Sack to take care of first. Yeah, both sides know about this, but there's not much cookies can do. And it does get taken out. Battle Fury up on the Juggernaut. Nice early timing on that. He actually didn't pick up the Aquila first or anything. Something we commonly see. I'm also impressed. I don't know if you checked, but Cookie's actually getting some levels. They're a level behind. Oh, they're going to go for the full static storm onto Baby Knight. Spectre comes in. Jalopy is there, but of course no Omni Slash. And maybe they'll go on him too. He's been silenced up once. Glimpsed over to the side, but Spin going to stop it from coming back. I mean, I, I feel like Flens, he's just like, in the scenario, he's like, alright, I'm just gonna get the drums, I'm just gonna do it. They, they keep getting these nice little wins that's getting him closer and closer to some bigger bounties, but uh, he knows that it's gonna be a very brawly game, so I, I appreciate the drum item. And then, with this whole brawling sense kind of coming out here, I'm wondering what Kezu is gonna go for. Like, you can see that control they just had on Baby Knight in between the static storm, in between the silences from Pablo. They already have a lot of options, so I don't know if you need to go for, like, that Orchid build on Kezu, if you can just... Maybe go back towards the drums. I mean, he's got the casual bracer for now, but it looks like he wants something a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know. I'm a little caught in between the orchid or even possibly like a uh, a really early sheep necro, possibly. Oh. I thought you were gonna suggest the sheep rush, which very rare, it's... but seen it a couple of times. Oh, stealing creeps. Very nice. I feel like they need damage too. I'd be okay with a maelstrom, honestly. That might be the item. Yeah, they're not gonna- Oh, they do manage to get the Yules off using the Kinetic Field to get Vision, and Biver is dead. A nice little pick off here for the lineup of London con uh, for Cookies, and yeah, Biver actually taking a really long time to die. So, these folks want to bail on out. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be the swap onto Flens, and he is just dead. <laughs> Two crits in a row, bringing him down. Ugh. That, that actually only happened because of the space made by the Winter Wyvern. Because the, all the positioning that they were able to achieve on the side of LC, the way they postured around that tier 1, they couldn't have done had that kill, you know, just been instantaneous, because they would have been rotating back in the mid lane. It's incredibly difficult for the Spectre, as you just mentioned. I mean, like, you're potentially having to fight into Ravage every time. You don't have a good spot to farm, because, as we've seen, Jalopy can just come by, Omni Slash you. And I, I think you... I, I like the drums... It's not great. You can eventually go back for a Radiance or maybe just build up a Monta here, also something that helps, but it's really rough. Like, I don't know where she's meant to get Farm here. Yeah, it's kind of... It's it's like Morphling, but not as safe, where you can push out these lanes and then you have a Replicate to go back to, but instead your Replicate's on a two-minute timer and you're still, you know, uh, you still just have to hold on to it. You have to show up at one of the other enemies, so there there's a little bit of space right now in the bottom lane. You would think that um, maybe they'd be going for kind of these defensive wards, but instead they kind of understand their draft. You know, they're reading the situations that we've won these last couple fights, we need to keep that up. So aggressive wards look for pickoffs, and they still need to be trying to convert exorcisms into objectives right now. It's so difficult, though. How do you... I mean, you attempt to turn, as you said, an exorcism into a tower, even going for bottom. You might get ravaged, and they do have the damage on LC to bring the death profit from full to zero very quickly. Yeah, it's, it's like, most teams, when you have the Death Prophet, you're just looking to press R and walk into the tower, but for the way that Cookie's draw lineup kind of, you know, interacts with the one on LC, with that Ravage exactly, they basically need a pick-off into an exorcism in somewhere else. They need, like, Solon right now underneath this ward. Like, they need to just show up and kill him, basically. And then maybe they can start going for these objectives, so... They're still not quite on top, you know, the, the lead has come back a little bit of the ways for LC. It's now back to around 4k. And, uh... I think Kezu, I saw him with that Mithril Hammer, he, yeah, he's going for the Maelstrom. I think, I really like this. I think it's the item to go. Okay, as you talked about needing damage, this time they're going to give it another go on to Biver. Gonna hope that Spectre's protected, they're going to get the kill, easily. And Spectre this time in the jungle, so no setup there. Let's right, say, easy. let's say this does go late game. I'm not sure it will, right? But if it does go late game, who are you giving the edge out to? Because OD and Juggernaut feel like stronger carries than potentially a Death Prophet, but then Spectre and Nature's Prophet, I'm not sure how that goes. Yeah, it's kind of like, past, I would have definitely said Cookies, uh, or rather, I would have definitely said Elsie, um, simply because of the Death Prophet, like the way that she used to be built, but now with this whole Spirit Siphon change, 
uh, with the percent base now coming to the Spirit Siphon is a massive difference moving to the later game. However, these aren't really heroes that build HP. Like, it's basically just going to be Kefka who's building into some sort of HP items and like tanking up heavily. But, you know, Jellybee as well as Baby Knight, they're not really going to be getting that beefy. So you're not really getting the benefits of your percent base. Kafka, I mean, he just blinks in and press Ravage anyway. He doesn't really care when he dies. And in that sense, the Spectre, obviously one of the best late game heroes with the dispersion damage coming out. But I think you're going to have to be favoring LC. Like, Venge just scales so well into the game with Nether Swap being able to save people just as they're dropping really low. Winner's Curse doesn't really fall off moving in later. It just ends up being more damage stacked onto yeah. somebody from the rest of their team. And then Ravage eventually becoming a double. And even that new Aghanims, which we've seen a ton of, I have to say, for Tide. And I got to say, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's not, I don't know the competitive pickup, but it's actually pretty hilarious and good, as you said. Like, it's it's not bad. It gives a big old gush that's minus armor in business. Always good synergy as well with the uh, Juggernaut. Oh, D has also saved up a crap ton of gold. Okay, just gonna buy out. Maybe just a early sheep. Yeah, Baby Knight's, um, if he's, if he's ahead, that is generally what he would go for. It's just a really early sheep. Uh, you know, falling behind, you kind of have to fall back towards getting yourself a BKB, but mm -hmm. this is the kind of game that you love to be an OD in. And so, yeah, I would, like, 100% think it's either going to be the Sheep, or he'll go for the BKB anyway. Oh, there gosh, the go. Winter's Curse sets up onto Kezu. There's going to be a Magic Missile. Oh, they swap him back, making it even worse, and one smack from Baby Knight helps get the kill. That's, a. Uh... That's really interesting that he goes to the BKB. I think it's a really smart decision just because of we've seen so many people not build defensive items and you end up losing the game just because of glimpse, which is so frustrating when you can just press your BKB and, you know, completely negate it. So uh, it also allows you to snowball really heavily in fights, you know. You just run in there, you're throwing out arcane orbs, you get up like 10 stacks, and then you win one fight, you start moving on to the next objective, and suddenly you can take like a full lane of towers. Speaking of a full lane of towers, uh, exactly yeah. what they're doing here on London Conspiracy. They need to mount some sort of defense. They don't have the Nature's Prophet. They're going to throw out some Crypt Swarms, but as you said, they've got to land kind of this perfect static storm. And no, London Conspiracy back on out. Even if they land a perfect static storm, as you said, OD suddenly has the BKB up. I really like that uh, four staff from Kefka. Really smart item choice. Not really much point in him going in towards the Blink Dagger. Although, you know, it's it's great and everything, but the four staff's going to be offering a, a lot more value right now, whether it's saving his allies from a Sprout if he's, like, too far away, whether it means he can get himself away from that Static Storm before the Kinetic Field comes out, because Stepsal has always been doing, you know, Static Storm into the Kinetic Field. He's not really guaranteeing the positioning first, so if you can abuse that, Kefka, you know, he, he always makes the right item choices. This guy impresses me. And, uh, Radiance Watch. 1160 gold. Buns. The dream. It's still real. Yeah, I, I mean, it's... I don't know how real the dream is. It's a really <laughs> incredibly rough game here for Flens. Luckily, oh, as I say, luckily, oh, oh. I don't know how they <laughs> knew he was there. He's gonna try to get on out, gonna escape. They don't have to... Oh, no, don't show yourself. Don't show yourself. Doesn't matter, goes for it. They're gonna find out where the rest of them are. They are smoked up on cookies. Can they find anybody here? BKB shown by the OD. There's a Ravage with your name on it. Oh, a nice static storm, but still, I think there's gonna be a Ravage in a second here. Can they bring down Kefka in time? There, no, he's trying to pop it. Can't quite get it off. There we go. Finally sees the Ravage coming on out. Kefka will die, but as you said, all he cares about is that Ravage. Omni slash kills off OD, uh, Death Prophet, and Kezu does manage to get the fly away. No Winter's Coast this time, but that's not a team fight that went Kobe's way. This is just... it's not great. Uh, it kind of looked like a, a nice little scenario there from Cookies as well. They had the scout out with the haunt, they were ready on the sidelines of the positioning, but Baby Knight, if he doesn't get that BKB off, chances are they lose that fight, honestly. Like, they had so much control lined up right in a row there. Uh, it would have been on the burden of Kafka to try and get a Ravage off to maybe save him, but he had his finger ready on that on that BKB and it was really fast right they came out of that fog yeah. you have to appreciate how close he was to those trees and that remnant was about to fly through and he's like no I don't think so and uh, just took the fight with ease also a lot of patience there from Kefka waiting until Death Prophet's BKB was down before he popped that Ravage making it so they could position on her to get off the Omni Slash just blow her up and that's a number of big ults down for Cookies to try and defend high ground with no huge ults this is going to be a tough one yeah, this is, uh, it's only 14 seconds of the stack storm. Man, it's still level 1. It's been a really rough game for these supports on the side of the uh, uh, cookies. 
Yeah, oh, old, old things considered, bad. I'm actually impressed with their levels, like, with the way this game is going. Maybe they can get the return kill on Biva, he's forced off to back into the fountain, oh, closer into the base, and yeah, Biva will okay. go down. How does that even happen? He wasn't even on the high ground, he Dyer's glimpsed back high onto high the high ground. ground. <laughs> you know, these things happen, welcome to Dota. Um, they actually end up killing their own Earth Spirit, though. That... That's sad. I mean, you gotta take that as a win when you get glimpsed back into the enemy base, so... Be happy with that. Oh, maybe he forced that. I don't know. I don't well, know. no. So he glimpsed. He glimpsed to right here, and then he was full stopped in. I'm so. just gonna believe that's what happened. I'll take that. I don't think he was glimpsed though? onto the high ground. That's but. what it looked. But like, no one else is a force staff. That's what. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it was either him or Kefka tried to help, and yeah. well, we'll you know, allow it. you know how it goes. Um, yeah. they're gonna be standing right on top of the invisible bench. And, uh, Juggernaut just looking for an easy, quick pick up. Holy oh. Hannah, that crit! <laughs> with the DD! And uh, now, looking for more. They still have the Omni Slash up. You also get auto attacks in between. Goes for the silence. I don't think you want a Spirit Slife in this! The qu the ulti comes out from the Spectre, and now we're gonna be seeing maybe they'll get off the Venge, but the ult's still flying around for Juggernaut. They do manage to get the Venge. The Exorcism is swarming. Baby Knight has popped the BKB. They might be able to turn this one around. Pablo, he's going for it. He has to be careful to crit. They stop Baby Knight from getting away. There's gonna be a Glimmer Cape, but they know exactly where Baby Knight is, thanks to the Spirit Siphon, and getting very low. Gonna go down a huge kill for Eskil. They're still chasing onto Jalopy. Do they have the auto attack? Attacks Kezu, hits like a truck now with the Maelstrom, can he get another proc the roll in the wrong way? They do have Jalopy all oh! he blinks away. What? I don't, how did, okay, doesn't matter, they're gonna go for the rock kick in, they're gonna miss. Jalopy, they're still chasing, they have to get in, they finally get in there. Oh man, that was like, ready to be great escapes, like, I shouldn't be alive, basically. Right. He did right. that as the magnetized wore off. That was the last tick because he was magnetized there. He blunk immediately after the last tick of the magnetized came off. Yeah, that was goodness crazy. gracious. Anyway, so uh, uh, oh, and they're gonna get Bibber, and this time won't kill one of their allies. Well played from Cookies. Um, they're getting themselves back into this. Yeah, no, those are some mass pickoffs. I, I tell you, the funds. Uh, he finally gets one to his own name, but. The really big bounties have all been going over to East Guild, which obviously is great. You know, he's got the BKB, he's got the Yules, he's got 4K sitting on top of it. But you gotta be thinking the Spectre's just there like, God, like, come on, guys. <laughs> I really need this, man. I mean, we've all seen those games where the poor Spectre, very similar to this one, you know, she has nine assists. How much would you give for all nine of those assists to be killed? <laughs> so, um, fun's not having the easiest. It's that point of the game, too, where he's just going for the, uh, the more, uh, I don't know if you want to call it defensive, but more... Maybe useful items, like not necessarily the radiance in terms of farming, just items like continue to get move speed, continue to get some fighting ability. Just try and last through these fights, try and help out with the damage, and understand that the radiance just ain't coming. Yeah, Yasha helps you farm, Yasha helps you do damage in that ult. I think maybe we'll go. The Monta obviously has a lot of nice things that you can dodge here or help you out with the Omni Slash. Do you go back for a defusal afterwards since it's pretty nice up against some of these heroes in London Conspiracy? I don't know, it's, uh, I, I think it might be one of those, like, player preference kind of things. I don't know if they need more control. Eh, it might not be that bad, actually, have a little bit more chase control, help out your death profit a little bit. They are lacking some general spell control, so. Okay, we have a weird TP in. They're gonna try to give it a go on Biver, but oh. Kezu has TP'd right into taking a bunch of arcane bolts, and oh, oh nice is... they didn't, they didn't get it. So close. Oh, they didn't have Winter's Curse up. Okay, and Astral Imprisonment. You know, it's got it's got a cost animation. We'll go with that. But they do manage to not die, even though they've given up the Aegis. And this push is now coming hot. I just I, I don't know how you take this next high ground fight if you are cookies. There is a blink up on Kefka, as we've talked about. He will just blink in and die. He doesn't mind doing that. No, no. If they get the pick up on Kezu, oh, maybe I didn't yeah, they, see him because it's night time. Like, if one person's missing from the side of cookies, it's gonna be a essentially impossible defense. And Kezu needs to keep being sneaky. You can see, he's giving himself a little bit of vision, trying to continuously cut some waves. Yeah, he's they, gonna... they, you're right, they need to delay this as long as possible. I don't... I don't think they can fight against the Aegis unless... Unless London Conspiracy make a mistake, I mean, even though Cookie's got some big kills there, they are still 6,000 net worth behind, they're behind in experience as well. Top tower is under this juggernaut, as we saw, he's he's getting these 400 crits pretty dang frequently, and for some of them, that is what? That's like three-shotting a disruptor? 
Yeah, he's he's basically been obliterating people. No, no DD at least this time. Yeah, make me happy about that. So they're already poking away at the high ground. Jalopy just standing there. He can take all of this since he does have the Aegis. They put down a defensive ward. Boulder comes out from Earth Spirit. He's got five of those, so he's saved up a lot of them. This is good. Yeah, Kezu went for the BKB too, so no buyback mm. from your Prophet. They have a glimpse back onto Bivo. Can they do the damage? There's going to be the Spectral Haunt out. Oh gosh, Spectral comes in on this Kefka. He has the Ravage, of course. He could just use it here. Decides against it. And now Wyvern will probably... Oh gosh, no, they're going in. Eskil really wants something. He's Spirit Siphoning a creep. They're trying to get in range. There's going to be a nice ult stopping Kezu from coming in any further. They are still Spirit Siphoning away the Ravage. There we go. There it pops out. And now Eskil brought down Lickety Split. Steph Style taking a lot of damage. There's the Omni Slash, and that's two of them already dead. Static Storm completely whiffing, and this will be an easy Rax for the lineup of London Conspiracy. Only buyback is on Death Prophet. Wow. You know that game last, uh, that time last game where there were the five buy buybacks from Cookies and they perfectly pulled away? LC just did it again there. When that haunt came out, excellent positioning, great re-engagement as well with that Ravage. Yeah, they're positioning top tier. There's going to be a swap back onto Eskil and now she's going to die again. A dieback coming out and that may just be the GG call. Pablo does buy back. Going to try to throw out some rocks here, but I don't think it'll be enough. And Rax is going down. Radiance top barracks has fallen. <laughs> I just noticed that Baby Knight had a Shadow Blade. I, I hadn't sniped that out earlier. That's hilarious. He he went Radiance into Scotty on a mid brood the other day in a game I was guessing that he was in. Yeah, Baby Knight does what he wants. Yeah, that's gonna lie. what I've gathered. He, um... I mean, London Conspiracy, I think it's a very good team. I Obviously, we can see from some of their positioning they are, but Baby Knight sometimes builds stuff, and I'm not sure if he's, like, gonna make some new meta or whether he's just having fun. Well, we asked, like, after the game, we asked him in the lobby, he's like, why Radiance? And he goes, why not? <laughs> Radiance, good. It's like, all right. And with this, looking towards getting the Megas, there maybe is one team fight left in Cookies before everything falls. They're going to go for it. Tide blinks forwards, has Ravage up, not for another minute here. So we'll see. Oh gosh, and Jalopy just obliterating Steph style. He has the spin already going off. The BKB is a prop from Kezu. He's trying to poke around at people, getting some nice Mjolnir procs, but it's not enough. He goes down. Their lineup has been ripped apart, and that's it. That's the GG. Well, it was kind of the same scenario as last game, albeit with a little bit more action, but once again, you know. <laughs> I like that. I like that ending from Spectre. That's, a, that's some style right there, but uh, uh, again, it felt like LC, you know, they were just in control the whole time, whether it be through the map or just through the general team fights. Yeah, they had a couple missteps here and there, but in the end, when it came to those big high ground pushes, the way that they positioned themselves around these massive ultimates of the haunt and the exorcism, and then the way that they were still able to use their own. Like, it's not like Cookies did the same thing back, you know? Like, the Ravages were always very solid, uh, other than that first one in the mid lane, as well as the Sandy's Eclipses. So, uh, better spell usage equals, you know, better chance at winning the game. Yeah, I think really well played on bo by both teams, but obviously LC coming out a little ahead, they had superior positioning. As you talked about, that pullback when there were the five buybacks, just not... Not something Cookies could do anything against in that first game. Either way, folks, that's going to be it for this series. There's another one coming up. Lickety Split, actually, there's, I think, an hour break between them. Gives you some time to go outside. I know you all love that. Advenem versus Danish Bears coming up next in an hour. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I've been joined by Mott Packs. We both go by those names on Twitter. Send us any and all feedback there. We'll see you next time. Do you have any final words before we sign off? Oh, um, I, I don't want feedback. I've actually peaked. Um, oh, excellent. I, I know okay. I'm, yeah, I'm Mod not going any done. further. No. Or, yeah, that's it. So No more um, feedback. Thanks for I... hanging out, guys. It was great. <laughs> I would love the feedback. We'll see you next time. Peace out, guys.